Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. Last time, we looked at the First Commandment and what's generally meant by loving God and putting Him first. And today, I think it's time to address probably the biggest misunderstanding of the First Commandment, idols. Of course, there are Ten Commandments. Everybody knows that. What people aren't always so clear on is just how to divide those commandments. Because, you see, it doesn't say in the Bible where one commandment ends and the next begins. Of course, the Catholic Church has an official and correct position on how the commandments are to be divided, but a fair number of people, especially in Protestant circles, think that the first commandment is only the part about having no false gods. They then assume that the second commandment is this. Thou shalt not make to thyself a graven thing, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath, nor of those things that are in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not adore them, nor serve them. In other words, this interpretation says that the second commandment is to not make idols or worship them. However, the worst mistake is that most often this commandment is believed by the Protestants who hold this view to have two parts to it do not make a graven image, and also, do not worship it. Because of this misunderstanding, some believe that it's always wrong to make statues or images or anything, while others believe that it's only wrong when the statue is used in some form of worship ceremony. However, neither one of these views is correct, because each is flatly contradicted by the scriptures. In order to prove this, we only need to find examples in the scriptures of God commanding both the construction of images and their use in religious worship, and that's easy to do. And the Lord said to him, Make, Make a brazen, brazen serpent, serpent, and set it, and set it up, up for a sign. Whosoever, Whosoever being struck shall look on it, shall live. live. Moses therefore made a brazen serpent, and set it up for a sign, which, when they that were bitten looked upon, they were healed. Numbers 21, 8-9 here, we clearly see God commanding Moses to make a graven image, and God validates the use of this image by performing a miracle through it. Therefore, making images is not wrong. If it were wrong, God wouldn't be able to command it, because that would involve God doing evil, which is impossible. Now, let's move on to another instruction which God gave to Moses while instructing him on how to build the Ark of the Covenant. Thou shalt make also two cherubims of beaten gold, on the, on the two, two sides, sides of the oracle. Exodus 25, 18. Now, it could be argued that in spite of its miracles, looking at the serpent wasn't a religious act. However, you can't argue that the Ark of the Covenant wasn't used in religious ceremonies. Therefore, God commanding a statue to be made and used in religious ceremonies clearly proves that that wasn't wrong either. What was wrong was not the building of images or the using of them in worship. What was wrong was worshipping the images themselves, and the Bible makes this pretty clear. Now, some say, but Catholics do worship statues. Here, I'm afraid there's simply no nice way to say this. This is a filthy lie. Catholics don't worship statues. We sometimes pray in front of statues, or even while looking at them, but we don't pray to the statue itself. There's one more common objection, namely that it's still wrong to make images if the image is meant to represent God. But here, all I could say is that the commandment clearly doesn't say that. What it says is that making images to worship them is sinful, but it doesn't say anything about what they're made to represent. So I just don't see that there's any support for this belief in the actual commandments of God. Now, at this point, all that a person defending these false views can really say on the subject of images is that they seem to have done some harm to the public understanding of God. For example, the image of God is an old man with a white beard sitting on a cloud, often seen in some medieval art. A lot of atheists use this image to attack the real God because the image is so odd or ridiculous. I happen to agree that that image has been used way too often by heretics and enemies of the faith and has done a lot of harm in its own way. But here's the thing. Even if an image has been abused to cause harm, that doesn't make the image bad or unworthy of Christianity in the same way that it doesn't make the Bible bad if someone smacks you over the head with it. Lastly, even if I had some kind of proof that religious images have caused more harm than good, and I don't see how I could possibly have that kind of proof, it still wouldn't change the fact that God commanded them to be made and used. And it's not up to us to decide when obeying God is too risky. God knows what the risks are a lot better than we do, and if 
understanding all that, we have a hard time following his commands about something like this, then maybe we just don't trust him as much as we think we do. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.